Here I go, here I go, here I go. Yeah, here I go, here I go. I'm your host, Jackson Burleson, of course. And in today's episode, we've got a lot to unpack here when it comes to the college football world and just college sports in general because college football is changing collegiate athletics forever. And here's why. So when it comes to college football, you know, TV rights are being thrown around, conference realignments are occurring, the NIL, the transfer portal, all these other college sports aren't really in that big into like all these things I just mentioned. And when it comes to the transfer portal, that is when it becomes an NFL type free agency atmosphere. Because if somebody just hops in the portal, you can just pay them as much money as you want, and then they'll come to your school. Originally, the transfer portal was not like that. In 2018, when it initially was launched, it was just so you didn't have to wait another year to go play for another school. Like Before that, you had to sit out a year because you weren't moving for academics, which everyone knows you're moving for athletics, which is the debate. But it's changing... Even even like high school sports, it's going to change high school sports as well because high school, you can move around, you can do a lot of different things, but it's going to trickle down. I mean, the college level is becoming professional. I know it's an amateur sport, but it is becoming professional, and there are a lot of things that the NCAA has to do to be able to have football be in its separate space. Like Alabama coach Nick Saban said this, He said college football needs to be separated from the other sports when it comes to the conferences because you don't need to ruin the other sports, make them travel more, make universities pay more money for it because there's just no point in that. Like there's really no point in having all that money into other sports that people don't watch. I'm sorry. May offend some people, me saying that. But football and basketball at the college level, are the only two sports people really, really tune in for, and that's where the majority of the revenue comes in. I mean, the NCAA made over $900 million in 2022. Where do you think the majority of that money is coming from? College football and college basketball. That's where the majority of that money is coming from. It's just the reality of how it is. It's not because no one likes the other sports. It's just because those other sports aren't viewed as much. The ratings aren't as high when it comes to TV. Now, when we look at the NIL, that is honestly helping athletes so much to the point where they don't have to go straight to the professionals. Like, this is an invalid rumor, but I'm going to bring it up anyways. Marvin Harrison Jr., the rumor was wrong. I'm not saying this is the number that he was getting from NIL, but people were saying that Marvin Harrison Jr. could make 20 to 25 million if he stayed at Ohio State. Now this number is invalid, but imagine if that money, imagine if that number were true. Like that number is ginormous. Like he would make more in one season than going to the NFL and being drafted third overall. Because if he was drafted third overall, he would make 38 and a half million dollars over four years, and if this money were true, this is a big hypothetical, but I think the reason I'm bringing up this hypothetical is because I think it could be a realistic number for all these players looking forward. Like, this is a ton of money. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen to everybody. It's only going to happen to the stars, of course, but it's very realistic in the future, and especially when the NIL just keeps expanding and expanding and expanding. Like, even smaller athletes have their own clothing brands now. Like, that is just opening the door for so many possibilities with this and so much money being made. And let's let's take Oregon for an example. I'm not pointing out any player, but Oregon is associated with the Nike brand. So the Nike brand is a way for Oregon to pay their players. I'm not saying Oregon is paying them, but they're using Nike to pay the athletes to come to their respective programs, whether that's recruiting or in the transfer portal. It, the, the, either way, it's still happening the same way. But the same thing is going on 
when it comes to the conference realignment. The only reason these schools are moving conferences is because of money. That's it. Excuse me. The only reason these conferences are going away like the Pac-12 is because of money. They don't have the money and they and the teams don't want to stay over there. They want to make money as well. And the whole goal with all of this is to have two mega conferences in college football to generate money. Athletes want money. NIL, money. Now, these schools still can't directly pay them, but in a way, they technically kind of are. So it kind of just depends on how you look at it. Are they paying them? No. But are they technically through another company? Yes. Now, when we look at a transfer like Riley Leonard, who's arguably one of the best quarterbacks in the country, played at Duke this year, had a great season. Duke was the top 20 team the most of the year. Um, he transfers to Notre Dame. And his NIL valuation was $247,000. Think about that number for a second. Seems like a lot, right? The minute he leaves Duke and goes to Notre Dame, his valuation goes up 250% to $847,000 just by going to Notre Dame. And then he signs an NIL deal with Gillette. With Gillette. That's a huge razor company. It's not a small razor company. It's not a local razor company. So this is all revolving around money. Now, obviously, players want to take advantage of this because prior to NIL launching, players weren't really making anything off of any of the revenue that the NCAA was bringing in off their collegiate athletes at all. And collegiate athletes should be paid. I don't know if it'll be salary-based. It probably will never be that way because they are still student athletes at the end of the day, which brings up my next point. Student athletes in all sports now are going to be traveling a ridiculous amount. Imagine the Big Ten, a game where Oregon has to go to Penn State all the way in Pennsylvania. I mean, that is pretty insane to me. That's a long bus ride. If some of these sports can't afford a plane, private planes are not a they're not something to just throw around. Like it costs a lot of money to get those teams on private jets to a certain location. Now, for football and basketball, they have those luxuries because they do make the majority of money for the NCAA and for the university. Without a football team, most colleges aren't even that well known. Like, let's be honest here. Without a good basketball team, most college colleges are not that well known. Everyone knows those two sports are the reasons why those universities are so massive. So massive. And we've got schools like Florida State who have an elite football program who, by the way, I'm a Florida State fan. And they now want to leave the ACC. Now, I think this is a great idea for them because the mega conference plan, like I just mentioned, will only feature two conferences, the Big Ten and the SEC. Now, the Big 12 is not going to be in this plan and the ACC is not going to be in this plan. Florida State has to pay $130 million to leave the ACC, which is insane. But for Florida State to gain respect, which I think Florida State having to gain respect is super, super ridiculous to me because they went undefeated this year. They didn't lose one game, and they still get snubbed of the college football playoff because of TV ratings. The college football playoff committee is supposedly ran by ESPN, okay? And you got a lot of athletic directors on there, CEOs of other companies on there, making these decisions. Now, the reason they're making these decisions, I don't know. Some of these people don't even look that qualified, but that's a different discussion. 
But Florida State to be left out is the reason why all of this money thing has came about. Like, there's a lawsuit between Florida State and the ACC now because the ACC doesn't want Florida State to leave. But Florida State says, if we stay in the ACC, we're not going to make the playoff. We got to leave and go to the Big Ten, which I think that's what they're angling towards. But it's crazy to me to think a school like Florida State has to leave their conference. Has to leave their conference. And they just got SMU, Cal, and Stanford to come to the ACC. Not powerhouse football programs by any means, but the ACC still felt like they had to make a move when all these other conferences were making adjustments, saying, hey, we need to get these teams. SEC got Texas. Pac-12, 10 teams are in the Big Ten now from the Pac-12. I mean, that's insane to me. That's insane. I'm kind of going on a little uh, tangent here. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought where I was trying to go with this. Um, Where was I trying to go with this? Okay, so back to Florida State being snubbed at the college football playoff. Them being snubbed out, the reason being is because they wanted Alabama in. They're in the SEC. ESPN. That's the reason Alabama is in because everyone wants to see Alabama in the playoff. It just it's just better TV. It's just better TV throwing Nick Saban in there. If you put Florida State in there, Michigan versus Florida State, there's not going to be as many eyes on that game than Michigan versus Alabama. That's just a fact, and that's why the committee left Florida State out is because of the ratings. And ESPN and the SEC are now officially tied in because CBS is no longer doing SEC games next year. They're not doing them. They're doing Big Ten now. CBS, Fox, NBC, those three networks are doing the Big Ten. ESPN is going fully SEC now. ESPN has ACC, but they throw them under the dust. They treat them with so much disrespect. They do. It's a fact. It's a fact. There's no dodging around this bullet anymore. And this transfer portal thing, I mean, I love it. I think it's awesome. I think it's great for college football. It makes teams and programs more competitive it's like recruiting in a way. It's like recruiting players who are already established. It's very, very cool. And it's better for players who are not necessarily getting opportunities at their originally committed school. I'm going to use this example. This is completely different. The transfer portal was completely different. There was no NIL when this is happening. But I'm going to bring him up anyways. Chicago Bears quarterback Justin Fields. He, according to ESPN, he was ranked number one in the country coming out of high school, according to ESPN. Justin Fields committed to Georgia. He obviously thought he was going to start as a true freshman, but he didn't. He wasn't getting the playing time he wanted, so he just hopped in the portal and went to Ohio State. That is an example right there of a player seeing his situation And doing the best thing he can possibly do for himself as a football player to get to the next level. That is exactly what we're looking at here. You see all these coaches leaving in the past. Like, for example, Lincoln Riley was at Oklahoma for a numerous amount of years. Then transfers to USC. As a coach, he goes to USC, which I said transfer, but he goes to USC. Takes more money. What happens then? Caleb Williams the 2022 Heisman Trophy winner. He follows Lincoln Riley to USC. Why? Because the transfer portal allowed him to do so. Before that, players were getting screwed because coaches would leave them and players commit to schools for that coach. The coach sells them on the program. 
And that is why players now have more power than ever because they can leave whenever they want, just like a coach could. That was the whole argument of, oh, this player committed here because he's this coach is here. Now this coach is gone because he went to go get more money. It's like me committing to Michigan and being a top recruit and then Jim Harbaugh going to the NFL. And then I'm stuck in college prior to the transfer portal existing. I'm stuck at that school because if I do transfer, it's going to set me back for a year. That's not a thing anymore, which is why it's changing everything about college sports. Now, the thing going back to all college sports is Nick Saban said this shouldn't affect other sports, which I agree with him. I think having lacrosse, baseball, even basketball for that matter, be a part of these conference realignments, I think it's bad. I don't think it's good because the only reason these conference realignments are happening is because of football, because of TV, and because of the mega conference plan. Those are the only reasons. And if we want to sit here and point fingers at people, we can go ahead. But the reality is, this is for money, and this is for football, and it's affecting all collegiate sports in a negative way. It is. And someone needs to fix this before it gets out of control. The NCAA needs to step in and be like, hey, I get you guys want to do this for football. You can't do this for other sports. Okay? That's my whole tangent on this topic. Um, let me know what you guys think of this podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Jackson Burleson. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Like the video. Uh, hit the notification bell so when I drop more podcasts like this, you guys can listen in, see what I have to say. Also, check out the take writing. Link will be in the bio. Uh, go check that out. But I'm your host, Jackson Burleson. Uh, thank you guys for listening to this episode of the Take Podcast. You guys take care. Talk to me, baby. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me nice. I'm from another world, baby, yeah. Broadway paradise. They think I'm way too cold because I put my heart up.